And we are live. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we will be discussing Jay Morrison and the recent update about what's going on with the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Recently, Jay held a Zoom call for investors where allegedly only 53 out of the 15,000 investors actually showed up. And on that call, he basically stated that they would be liquidating the assets that the fund currently holds and basically that they would be shutting down. Now, Jay Morrison hasn't publicly said this yet, so we have to use the word allegedly. But if you have been following me for the past five years, I have been telling you from day one that this would happen because there were so many red flags from the very, very beginning when Jay Morrison first launched his fund. And there wasn't really any transparency in regards to who is Jay Morrison? What is his background? How successful is he? And uh, people like myself, Yvette Carnell, Antonio Moore, and many others started covering this. But Tone Talks was the first person that I came across that really started raising some really important questions in regards to who are you? What's your background? Uh, how successful have you actually been in real estate? How many deals have you actually succeeded in? And, you know, so many people were saying, oh, you're just trying to tear a brother down. Oh, you know, you just, you don't want to see a black man win. You know, we over here, we doing business, you know? And after the first report came out, I really started covering the Tulsa Real Estate Fund and just basically the poor performance. Now, I want you guys to understand, I was making videos before he even announced the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. See, if you come here and you look on my channel, you can see here, I actually made a video about Jay Morrison back in 2018, but some of those videos got flagged down. But as you can see here, Jay Morrison believes asking your government for reparations is foolish. I made this video June 26th, 2019. So why is this important? Because, you know, the Hotep Back to Africa, Red, Black, and Green, and B1 Simps, they love to come here and try to make it seem as if somehow um, Tony and myself and JT are colluding together to try to tear black men down and destroy black business. When in the reality, here's the fact. When I was making these videos about Jay Morrison, Pocket Watching with JT didn't even have a YouTube channel. When I was making these videos about Jay Morrison, Tony and, and Jay Morrison, they didn't even do business yet. Tony actually linked up with me after seeing one of my videos about Jay Morrison. So I think it's important that when people try to create these narratives that somehow, you know, it was the haters that's just trying to take black business down. No, this man had $11.7 million. He had that money, which means that if he was any bit of the expert that he claimed to be, the mogul that he claimed to be, the mogul, the business tycoon that he claimed to be, that he promoted himself to be, there's absolutely no way he should not have been able to deliver a return for the investors. Now, why is this key? Because, see, there were so many red flags from day one. But I want to point something out. I see my brother JT right there. Shout out, Yvette Tone. You guys have been uh, on the story since day one. Absolutely, and I appreciate it, right? And I want to highlight something, right? Because, see... I want you to see the Jay Morrison in 2019. And then I want you to see the Jay Morrison today in 2024, right? Because God sure has a way of humbling, <laughs> of, of humbling people, right? So listen to this. This was back during the Revolt Conference, right? Guys and Moors and others, I'm just giving you game the elder gave me. I know. And I'm rich, rich. Hebrew Israelites and Moors and others. I'm just giving you game the elder gave me. I know some of y'all don't like me because I'm swaggy and I'm rich, rich, and I do this shit in real life, but get past your dislike for me real quick. Well, Mr. Swaggy Swaggy, Mr. Rich Rich, let's see what you did in real life, right? Shouldn't we? I mean, you're talking big cash shit right there. You're saying I'm swaggy. 
I'm rich, rich. Wow. And you do it in real life. So let's look and see what you did in real life. In 2019, you can see here, this is the actual SEC report. You can see that there is a management fee, right? So down here, you can see that in 2019, he lost $1 million. $1,018,992. But he paid himself a $413,000 management fee in real life because <laughs> he does this in real life. He's swaggy and he's rich, rich. In 2020, he lost $1.9 million, but he paid himself a $512,000 management fee. And then if we come here to 2021, he paid himself a $280,000 management fee while losing $1.2 million. Then in 2022, he lost $1 million and he paid himself a $300,000 management fee. Now, while Mr. Swaggy Swag in real life and Rich Rich made that video, he was just now coming out of bankruptcy. <laughs> I want you to think about that for a second. He's up here telling you how swaggy he is, right? How rich he is. What the niggas broke? <laughs> how he does this in real life. And then we look and we say, well, wow, what did you do in real life? <laughs> you lost money. Just like you did in your real life. You lost your money, which is why you had to file bankruptcy. But see, only in the pro-black, back to Africa, red, black, and green, B1, hotel community, could this foolishness even exist. Because the, the even, and Umar's the same way, the lo, just follow the logic train. They want to practice group economics, but the problem is black people don't stick together. So I'm going to create something knowing I need group economics and people to stick together. And I know that we don't stick together. So I create something that needs unity. I know that we're not unified. I still create it and it fails. And then I go, it fails because we're not unified. But somehow in the midst of the failure, they always benefit. You have to be really, really slow to even fall for that. Could it be? that maybe they're creating these things knowing that they would fail so that they can benefit and then they can hide behind the excuse, well, we just don't stick together. But then when you do stick together and you give them your money, it never works out, but it always works out for them. Right? It's just, it, it's the, the logic makes no sense. Then maybe you should stop creating things that require unity. If that's the reason why it fails, but see, that's not the reason why it failed. It failed because the fund manager designed it that way to fail where that even, even with all of this failure going on, he still was paying himself exorbitant management fees. And then now when you look at this item right here, general administrative and marketing, it is really, really important when you look at this right here, because this blue line right here, and I'll blow it up for you spent $1.4 million and then another $929,000. This is not on acquiring real estate deals. This is not on actually doing business. This is just running the fund and marketing. And then we find out he's a serial entrepreneur and Treff is the umbrella. And guess what other businesses are subcontracting and doing work for Treff? Businesses that he has an interest in. Now, I, you know, I'm a coon, I'm an agent. So, you know, what do I know? But chat, can you please tell me, does that sound like double dipping or triple dipping or quadruple dipping? Again, Treff's the umbrella, but companies that Jay Morrison has are subcontracting and doing the work. This is outside of the management fees. Can the chat tell me, does that sound like double, triple, or quadruple dipping? Tell me, chat. I want to know. <laughs> I'll take a sip of one of that. 
<laughs> you know, and I want to come back to this video because when 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 you see someone that is even carrying themselves this way, that should be the biggest red flag to you that this man is supposed to be a fund manager, right? And I want to play this again because this was back in 2019 when he did this foolishness, right? <laughs> this is why I like I've been covering this man for a very very long time. We go back here. I want to play this again because this this right here showed me everything I needed to know about him. <laughs> Hebrew Israelites and Moors and others. I'm just giving you game the elder gave me. I know you know, some of y'all don't like me because I'm swaggy and I'm rich, rich, and I do this shit in real life. But get past your dislike for me real quick. Baba Joe is the one that put. <laughs> See. The universe sure has a way of humbling you hotep ass niggas. Because he went from that <laughs> to now. Now he's turning to God. <laughs> now he's a pastor. He's a minister. <laughs> we got on his ass so bad. He left the swag alone and turned to God. <laughs> this is him now, right? He's over here praying. He's getting down on his knees. He done found God now, right? He ain't swaggy no more. He ain't rich, rich no more. <laughs> this is what we got him doing now. <laughs> this, is what he, this is what he doing now. Thank the word of God, fellowship. Thank the safe travels here. Above all we ask that your word be released today, that you were glorified. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Good morning. <laughs> We done fried his ass so bad, he done turned to the Lord. <laughs> you know, so that's the good thing, you know, and I, I say this all the time. Shout out to Tone Talks, because if Tone didn't make those videos, because Tone was really, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't care what nobody say. Tone Talks was really the only one that I saw at the beginning that really pressed the issue. Because Tone came with some detailed questions he actually went through the actual, the prospectus and everything and looked at just even the way that the fund was set up. The fact that he had that much control was problematic. The fees that he was charging was problematic. The fact that he was calling in an IPO and there wasn't a public market to actually offload the shares. And see, that's something that's very, very important too. And peace, thanks for the donation, S. Right. Because see, whenever you're investing your money into something or with someone, the very first thing that you have to ask yourself is, how do I get out of this investment if it doesn't work out? How much risk am I taking on with this investment? Because see, if I'm taking on, give me one second, let me just fix this, this is over here, right? Boom, right? Because if I'm investing my capital in something and I can't liquidate the asset or I can't liquidate and get out of that asset, that's problematic. So when he was calling it an IPO, there was no public market to actually liquidate and sell for shares. And I love when people say, well, you don't really understand the way the fund was set up. There was a million shares to sell, the minimum to buy, he was trying to raise $50 million. And effectively, what he was doing is he was selling a $50 share value. Like JT said now, where does the $50 per share come from? Where did the valuation even come from? Just pulled it out of his ass, right? <laughs> it wasn't based upon the assets that the company had, because when they started it, they didn't have any assets. So now... He's valuing the company at an outrageously high valuation that doesn't even exist and then forcing you to have to buy 10 shares, which was why it was a minimum of $500 in investment. So now you're locked up in this investment because effectively what he was doing with the crowdfunding is you were basically lending Jay Morrison money at 8% because that's what a whole 8% preferred and then 50, 50 split. And then every dollar beyond the 8%, if the fund was profitable, you would be able to share in that 50% split. Now, I want you to understand, real estate is an extremely efficient marketplace. Real estate's not like crypto. Real estate's not like where there's, because no one really knows what cryptos are worth. And I, see, I like to teach. In the midst of joking and having fun, I always love to teach. See, when you're investing in technology, especially disruptive technology, this is why you see NVIDIA almost at a $2 trillion valuation, because... You don't know what it's worth at this point. It can be the most revolutionary thing, or it can end up just being hype. 
Now, again, they have good rep, they have good earnings. But my point is that when you're investing in AI, when you're investing in streaming like Netflix, et cetera, when that stuff is new, it always overshoots because no one truly knows what it's worth. Is it worth a trillion? Is it worth a billion? We don't know. As the market matures, then you start to really see what it's worth. As the business starts to bring in clients, starts to bring in customers, starts to create products and bring products to the marketplace. Real estate's different. Real estate is an extremely efficient marketplace. You're not really going to find, you know, deals where you're making 40x on your money, 20x on your money. So when I saw him coming out with this type of investment vehicle, it didn't make any sense with the whole 50-50 split because you had people thinking that they were going to turn $500 into a million dollars. That that does doesn't happen. That only happens in markets where you can't really value it. And see, I like uh, when a lot of you like to come on here and say, "You're no different." You're a crypto scammer, right? Well, let's look at some of my scams and let's see how my scams have performed versus the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Because I want you to understand that this man lost money in one of the greatest bull markets of all time, right? One of the greatest bubbles of all time. And you could have put your money in anything else other than the Tulsa Real Estate Fund and actually 10 extra money or 20 extra money. So if we look at Bitcoin versus the dollar, right? And we come here and we go, let's find our little bit old ruler. Where's our ruler at? Give me the dot, dot, dot. I wanna find our ruler. So where is the ruler? Here we go, boom. If we go here to 2018 when the fund was created, this is September, boom, 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 boom. October 18, right? So let's go here, let's go June. If we go here, Do, 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 Let me go up to here where it's currently sitting at right now. That is, that says 682% on your money. And that's if you went from June, if you went from a low of $3,000, that's probably about 20 times on your money. If you put it in one of my scams, right? Let's put it in one of my scams, right? Let's look at Ethereum. Let's see what Ethereum did. Let's go here. Let's go uh, ETH, USD. Um, let's go to Ethereum. Do, 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 do. ETH, USD, right? <laughs> I'm a crypto scammer. So let's look at my crypto scams and see how did my crypto scams do? Uh, if you come here, you measure from low to high right here. This is ETH. That's 3,000, let's go again, let's do it again, boop, 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 boop. And I'm using the word scam as a joke. Right here, that's what, uh, 2,000 now, because I didn't get it from the exact bottom, that's what, 2,569%. Okay? So, <laughs> had you listened to me, I've been on the channel talking about Bitcoin since it was $3,000, Ethereum since it was $40, you would be up at least, a thousand percent on your money, at least 10 X on your money, <laughs> right? My investors all profitable in my investment opportunities. My, my investors are in the chat, <laughs> but you know, what do I know? I'm just a crypto scammer. And I say that jokingly to be sarcastic because you know, you have idiots come on here and say, well, if you got something better than the shelf as I do, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chain link. Look at the price when I talked about it and look at the performance of it. See, you can only judge a man based upon the performance of the things he talked about. Everything that I talked about today is higher than it was back when the fund started. So I think I know what I'm talking about. Eli, your scams, haha, -ha, profit me over at least 20,000. Facts. Salute, King. There go a person right there. Did I, did I pay that person to say that? See, my scams are profitable. Gold, gold is hitting, gold is hitting all time highs. <laughs> Gold's hitting all time highs. Crypto's hitting all time highs. And Tulsa Real Estate Fund investors, I believe when JT made the video, I think that their $50 shares were worth like $14 at this point. <laughs> they there, the people's there. And see, my investors actually have taken money out and gotten paid. <laughs> you know, so 
I, I laugh at these things because, you know, you, you, when you deal with the Hotep Back to Africa, Red, Black, and Green, B1, FBA, they're, they're so emotional with everything, right? They're not logical. And see, it's very hard to convince someone to use logic when it was emotion that got them into the situation in the first place. See, if you come over here, right, and you look at the Fed funds rate, this is very, very important. And this is how you know that you're dealing with an amateur because that $11.7 million should have been leveraged. There's no way you should have purchased the Black House, which is just a pet project of Jay Morrison. But why would you use cash when interest rates right here are at 0%? I want you to think about this for a second. Why would you use cash to buy deals when you could borrow at virtually 0%? Like Julian said, he could have easily leveraged that into $40 million, $50 million and actually had a lot of deal flow coming in. Now... <laughs> It's just a simple Google search, but I know, see, anything outside of astral projecting and tapping into your chakras, you niggas can't do that, right? You can't just pull up a Google and just say, oh, well, what was interest rates? And then going to say, well, what's the, you know, what's the median sales price of houses sold in the U.S.? Let's look at it. This is 2020. <laughs> this is 2020. The median sales price was $322,000. It then went all the way up at the peak <laughs> to $479,000, which means he could have purchased anything and almost doubled the money. 860, 70% on the money. How do you lose money in one of the greatest bubbles of all time? You had 14-year-olds creating NFTs with pictures of monkeys, and they were making millions of dollars, <laughs> right? How? how? How do you lose millions of dollars? In 2020, he lost what His biggest losing year was in 2020 when the market boomed. Then he turned around and he lost in 2021. He turned around and lost $1.2 million. <laughs> Check out another one of my investors right there. <laughs> you are a scammer. Thanks for your scams. I turned four figures into six. You need to be stopped. Yeah, right? I, I can have student after student come in here, investor after investor come in here, and, should, and actually receipts they've gotten paid <laughs> they've actually made money <laughs> they've actually like cashed out and realized gains right not like little little phantom money that's in some shares in a black house somewhere no they actually got their money back right and their profit and if you want to invest with a person like myself text the word invest to the number below oh you know i'm gonna promote myself because see when you do good business why wouldn't you why wouldn't you <laughs> right <laughs> there goes somebody else dre harden the, the book of eli and bold print we appreciate you and I appreciate y'all too because see when I first start covering Jay Morrison and then me and Tony had linked up they were trying to make it seem as if like you know Tony was like staring me and paying me and I was trying to be baby Tony or I was making this type of video content back in 2018 2017 I was talking about Umar polite and all of them because they're nothing but grifters see they have all of the answers. They can cure diabetes. They can cure cancer. They can fix poverty. They can fix the prison or school pipe, you know, the, the school, the prison pipeline. And then you give them the money and nothing happens. And look, here's another one, right? See, where, where's, where's 19 Keys at now? You can see he posted this 283 weeks ago. He was supporting the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Let's listen to what he had to say. Peace family, peace family, it's Year of the Keys, man. Next year is the rule for the rich, righteous teacher, meaning that those who are righteous, who have good intent to change the paradigm, will now have the resources to fund their ideas. It's always been applied to the poor, righteous teacher to not have resources to actually fund their ideas, to fund their minds, so that we can actually make effective change. 
And 1919, since the 100 year cycle is about to come back around, is when the construction on Black Wall Street began in Oklahoma. It was also when you had the Black Star Line by Marcus Garvey. Not since 1919 have we built something up so incredible. So it's time for us to end that paralysis. It's time for us to take on a new way of thinking and we get back to utilizing the tools that's in existence so we can actually build the world that we want to see. 2019 is the year of the keys because if I give you the keys, then you take that and you give it to somebody else instead of all these rusty locked minds, everybody is the key. Everybody is giving each other the necessary energy to free ourselves and go to our highest level of potential. It's time to tap in. Peace. What the fuck does that have to do with the Tulsa real estate fund? I mean, what in the world does that have to do with the Tulsa real estate fund? But see, and Yvette talks about this all the time, and it's just so true. And see, I like to, I like to give credit to the source. We allow these people to come to us with these grandiose aspirations. <laughs> and then when it fail, we just let them move on to something else. No, we have to hold you to these aspirations that you have because they sound really well. Until you actually play them out. And to this day, I am still trying to find out what does 19 keys actually do? Okay. I'm trying to figure out what, what does he actually do? Because if you listen to this, this is just a bunch of nigga prison babble, right? This is just nothing but a bunch of nigga prison jailhouse babble. But see, again, I've been following this circle for a while and back in 2019 <laughs> mr swaggy swaggy rich rich uh let's see if i can find that video back in 2019 right see this is what these people engage in this is what they really do they just run their goddamn mouth all day so this was at the revolt summit back here right this is when he did the whole swaggy swaggy rich rich in real life right CEO of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Shh. Yeah. Yeah. CEO of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Shh. Yeah. Yeah. Honorable Malcolm X said we suffer from political oppression, economic exploitation, and social degradation. I believe for us to end our political oppression, we need political unity. This is a healthy debate, but I think we're approaching it too micro and not enough macro. I believe if we're going to unify, we got to unify first around nationality. So my question is, Tip knows this, we spoke about it in your race outside my sure. office. Tamika knows this, we spoke about this for years. Puff, we want to bring this to you. We need a black vote day. Not a vote day about Democrat or Republican. We need to vote about who we are as a people. Are we Africans in America? Are we Pan-Africans? Are we Moors? Are we Nation of Islam? Who is our nationality? What is our flag? What is our constitution? What are our, bar what are our bar bylaws? What are our values? And so what I'm saying to the panel and us as leaders, can we be that intentional, Mike, about burning down both the master's houses, focusing on our own house, galvanizing all of our leaders in one place at one time to vote on our nationality, our flag, our values, and have a black vote day in real life? Can we do that? Uh, I think it would be helpful. I, I, I do. I, because I think there's a lot of conversation right now around reparations and so on and so forth. But, uh, as it's been, as, it, as I have been uh, enlightened by Brother Jay Morrison, we can't get reparations because we haven't been officially classified as a nationality. <laughs> African American is not a nationality. Black is not a nationality. So you can't give reparations to people who don't have an official nationality, a flag, a constitution, and, and you have a, a, a seat at the UN, you know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> and also, so when we speak, when people ask me about reparations, I'm like, well, that's kind of putting the cart before the, that's putting the cart before the horse. So I understand the importance of that, but I also think that it has to be detailed instructions, line items, step by step of how to achieve. <laughs> like I said, this is what got me to start making going in on Jay Morrison when I saw him trying to grift the ADOS movement. It had nothing to do with Tony. JT wasn't even making videos back then. This is before him and Tony even had the business conference. I was already making this type of content, right? Because like this is extremely problematic what they're doing here because they're trying to come to you and co-opt a movement, what Yvette and Tone put together, 
and they're trying to make it seem like they have a solution, right? Now, this is when he was talking about the plebiscite, right? And you always can tell when a nigga learned a new word, right? You go, you always can tell when a hotel back to Africa, red, black, and green, B1 learned a new word. Because they can't wait to tell you, right? They're like a little kid, like, you know, like plebiscite, right? <laughs> like the plebiscites. You know, it's like you just have to, and T.I.'s another one of those, you know, playing around with a whole bunch of words and trying to confuse you like he's really intelligent and smart. You don't need a flag or a nationality for you to be able to go out here and get reparations because you already have a flag. You're an American, <laughs> right? And they've already paid our reparations to people in America. You don't need a flag or a plebiscite or to go to the world court. But see, I want you to understand this whole, this whole exchange, now that we know what we know today, was fake. See, this whole exchange was put together like he said, the CEO of Tulsa Real Estate Fund, it was designed for him to look good. It was marketing. It was promotion. They don't give a fuck about reparations. They don't care about the black plight. See, you know, when you, you can't be for a dollar and be pro-black. You can't be about trying to help black people and be for profit and be, a, be, and be for profit in the capitalist. They're just an oxymoron. It doesn't make any sense because we don't have any money. But see, if you are a grifter, if you are a manipulator, if you are a deceiver, if you are a liar, then you'll do that all day long because you know you're coming here to try to get money. You're not coming here because you actually truly want to help people. You're coming because you want to try to make some money. That's what the reality about it is. That's the truth. <laughs> you know, and if we listen to a little bit more of this video, you'll hear how, how just stupid everything that he's saying is. So let's go back and play this again. and others. I'm just giving you game the elder gave me. I know you know, some of y'all don't like me because I'm swaggy and I'm rich rich and I do this shit in real life but get past your dislike for me real quick. Baba Joe is the one that put me on game that they went to the Supreme Court, the National Coalition for Blacks for Reparations in America, and Cobra, look him up. His name is Joseph Epps. They went to Supreme Court for reparations. Joseph Epps, I said it again, Baba Joe, Baba meaning father, meaning elder. And so what? I, so I asked Baba Joe in Mississippi on their farm, right, black owned farm in Mississippi. I was there with the new Black Panther Party about three or four years ago. And I said, Baba Joe. Now, I want you to, I also too, <laughs> I want you guys to look at the comments from the slow niggas, right? Look at the slow niggas' comments. They're putting a goat, <laughs> right? I want you, somebody said, you are not wealthy. I'm glad somebody said that. But I want you to read just the foolishness of the people who support this bullshit. Look at the comments. Let me make it full screen. Why don't we have reparations? You guys have been fighting for it since the 60s. Why don't we have it? Baba Joe said, we went to Supreme Court. The judge told us that we have a great case for reparations. He said, the problem why we can't get reparations is because he said he said our case for reparations as Africans in America was similar to that of Japanese Americans who got reparations after their two years in internment camps during World War II. He said the difference between us and Japanese Americans, this is Baba Joe translating to me what the goddamn Supreme Court judge told him. Is that Africans in America or African Americans or black people are not a legitimate nationality. Therefore, we cannot receive or will not be recognized as a nationality to receive reparations such as the Japanese Americans who have Japanese direct heritage. So I said, me, I'm like, okay, Baba Joe, I'm all about abundance. Like, all right, I'm problem solver. No solutions, just result. I mean, no, uh, you know, no problems, just solutions. You know what I'm saying? That's me. I'm always on a solution mode. So I'm like, Baba Joe, all right, if they saying we can't get reparations because we're not a nationality, then... How do we become a nationality? How do we fix it? He said, according to Supreme Court, excuse me, World Court statute. And I looked this up myself and read it for my goddamn self. I, I did the research. See, I don't want to be just talking and be talking. I do this shit in real life. So, Supreme a World Court statute says, a people of a like kind, like circumstance, and like experience, who may have been colonialized or otherwise genocide or had the human rights violations, um, you know, imposed on, those like-kind people, if they hold a plebiscite, 
which is called, which the definition of plebiscite is called a public vote. And mind you, I wrote all this in my book called The Solution, How Africans in America Achieve Unity, Justice, and Repair. So I actually wrote out the whole shit in my best-selling book. It's a bestseller in civil rights and liberty, Amazon.com. I wrote the whole shit out, by the way. But well, not here nor there. I do this in real life. Uh, well, let's see what you did in real life. Let's go back because we, we got to make sure we stay on topic here. In real life, in 2019, you lost a million. In 2020, you lost 1.9 million. You know, in 2021, you lost 1.2 million. And in 2022, you lost a million. So you definitely did some shit in real life, but it wasn't successful, you know? And it's just like, <laughs> you, uh, only in the black community could some foolishness like this even be allowed to be spewed. And then you see the people going, yeah. Facts, facts, facts. This is why I say time and time again, you niggas are slow. There's no, there's no way you could get around it that you can see. And then look, now it gets even better, right? Because if you go to the town hall that they recently had, right? I want to play the town hall. Oh, I want you to listen to this foolishness. So now it is being alleged by Julian Gordon, the top investor who put $40,000 into the fund. That Jay Morrison used the fund's money to purchase his house on 39 Demoni Road or Drive in Atlanta. Where basically he purchased it with the fund's money and then did a quick deed claim to an anonymous LLC that he controls. But even in the midst of all of the losses, I want you to listen to how the people are still greeting him. <laughs> yes. And I wanted to uh, debunk these um, these baseless claims of a fraudulent misappropriation of these things within the company. Yes, ma'am. Peace, King. How are you doing? I'm well, Queen. Thank you. Good, good. Um, yourself. I'm sorry. Yourself. I'm, I'm well. Thank good. you. My name is Sarai. I live in Atlanta. I've been coming here for a little over a year. And to be frank, I didn't know anything about this fund before a week ago and everything was um blowing up and i just also wanted to publicly acknowledge you because i felt very like just heated over the pure scandal and drama that all of this has incited because it's embarrassing it's it makes me purely upset because she's slow she is slow this is the definition of these niggas are slow there's no way you can tell me that her lineage, where she come from, that they built the pyramids and they mapped out the stars and the moons. She was not no queen. She was a peasant. I don't care how you feel about it. That nigga is slow. And a lot of black people think just like her. You got documentation from the goddamn SEC. This man has lost $1 million almost every year. And you talking about a scandal, man. Let me tell you something. I keep trying to tell you I've come see I, at the age I am now and I got successful. I could come up here and I could pop my shit, right? Cause I'm doing good for myself. These niggas are slow. This is your average hotel back to Africa, red, black, and green B1. The man tone talks laid out the goddamn bankruptcy As, case. I don't know. It the bankruptcy case with his friend, Michael Avant where he sued him and won. You got Roderick Stanback coming out. You got the fake check with Young Jeezy. Okay? You got Tony the Closer running rampant telling anybody he got him for $100,000. Okay? Will Roundtree done came out and sued him. You got Isaac Grace right here. Right? You got Isaac Grace, who was the protege. He came out here blasting him. Let's listen to Isaac Grace. Okay? Listen to this. If they can play. Okay. Oh, it doesn't want to play. Give me one second. Let me get the video. I'll find it. Do, 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 do. Give me one second, people. Let's find the video with Isaac Grace. Let's go here. All right. I got to find the video. It won't play. All right. Google file. Let's go. Uh, let me do. Uh, give me one 
play? Why won't that video play? Don't tell me QuickTime froze on us. Give me one second. There we go. Isaac Grace. We got Isaac Grace here. Okay. He came out and he goes. My mentor was out here telling me to stay tame and, and, and teach strategy that I wasn't really doing in real life for a client. But this is a guy who never wholesale. This is a brother who never fixes and flip houses. This is a brother who never even bought My mentor. That's his protege saying Jay Morrison never did no real estate, never, never wholesaled. All the things he was telling him to do was a lie. I want you to understand women like this, people like this. <laughs> this is how slow they are. Jay Morrison could have just literally went in their pocket, took their wallet, went in their house, robbed them blind. And she'll see $20 on the floor and she'll come to Jay Morrison and go, hey, sir, you dropped this. He done robbed her. The twenty dollars on the floor is hers. She'll pick it up and be like, "Hey, sir, you dropped twenty dollars." I, I mean, like with, with people like this, you don't gotta be that creative to rob them. I mean, goddamn, sister, sister, he he's putting his hands in your pocket. He's taking your money out your pocket. Okay, he drops a couple of hundred dollars that came out of your pocket on the floor. <laughs> you pick them up and give them back to him. <laughs> you you gotta be a special type of stupid to be in here calling this man a king. <laughs> you calling this man a king after this man then turns around. But see, the pimping is cold. The pimping is cold because if you come here to this, right, it gets even better. Where's Spencer's video at? Where's the Spencer video at? Because I, I just like, I couldn't believe what I was watching here. Okay. <laughs> He's sitting here <laughs> and they're asking him, did you use the funds money to buy your personal residence? I want you to listen to what he has to say. <laughs> this, this is crazy. <laughs> questions the first and most important question was around his recent purchase in atlanta do you jay morrison own 3900 de mooney road and the answer is yes i do uh my address is now out there i my family we own 3900 de mooney road julian gordon made a detailed video about jay purchasing this property with the funds money and then deeding it over to an llc that jay happens to own for zero dollars if you're interested in seeing Jay's highly unethical and borderline illegal behavior exposed by Julian, Tulsa Real Estate Fund's top investor, I'd highly recommend watching this video. Sending gift cards in bulk can be a nightmare. Tremendous is a platform that takes this video. Jay claimed he purchased the property because the fund would have access to develop large apartment buildings on 27 acres, but that came just before also saying this. I will say that the fund is uh, sub $500,000 of cash and that we absolutely must raise capital to keep the mission going. The fund had no money because... I thought you did this in real life, right? But let, let me tell you how cold the pimping is, right? So allegedly, he uses the fund's money to buy the property then deeds it over to an LLC that he controls. And then because his property sits on the 27 acres of land, he actually controls the land. The fund only has the right to develop on the land. But the only way you can develop on the land is if you give him more money. <laughs> let me break it down for you again, because I know some of you niggas are slow. So let me get my Uber Johnson on it for Peter for you three times. He allegedly uses the fund's money after he's been paying himself management fees, after his companies have been working for the fund. He then deeds it over to an LLC that he controls for zero dollars. And then the, the, because it's sitting on the 27 acres of land, he controls the, he owns the land. You own the right to develop on the land, which means the only way you can develop is if you give him more money, which means you put more money back in his pocket. Cold pimp right there. And the slow niggas, the slow niggas, the slow niggas is sitting there like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> King, King J. Yeah, that makes sense, King J. <laughs> Yo, these niggas are slow. <laughs> these niggas are slow.
He's having a town hall meeting. When he's doing this right here, he's having a town hall meeting. Where's the video at? This, he's in front of the investors while he's telling them this shit. He's telling them. He's telling them, hey, yeah, I bought the property with your money. And I own the land. <laughs> but you got the right to develop on the land. And they said, like, yeah, King J. Yeah, King J, that makes sense. <laughs> You can't make this shit up, right? But these are the people that come on here and tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm a cloud chaser, right? I'm a cloud chaser. <laughs> and I want you to look at these two hookers right here. They can't, they, they, the EYL guys, they love, they love to get them some views, right? You know, they call everybody else a cloud chaser. <laughs> yeah, they want to interview everybody I got a name. Look at these two hookers over here. Look at them. Look at them just to smile. This is years ago. Look at them just to smile. And they was happy to have King J on. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It was like Diddy said, man. He's giving us a million dollars. Thank you all for coming out on behalf of the Green Wars Academy and Street Kings Foundation. And I hope this money goes the wrong way. It was, it was a great marketing plan, but it all was a fake. It was perfect timing because this is around the time when Jeezy got caught with all the guns in Cali. So he needed that good publicity. So, Jeezy, there was a situation that was really heavy in the news. Uh, in Irvine, California. Let's play the game. Are you a leisure? <laughs> Most requested. Yeah, yeah. 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 They know. So what we going to do is like Diddy said, man. He's giving <laughs> look at these hookers. Look at the hookers. Look at them. Look at them. Are you a leisure? They know. Most requested. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they know. So what we going to <laughs> Are you a leisure? <laughs> Most requested. Look, <laughs> That's before the pajamas, right? That's before the terry cloth and the Prada, right? Look at them, look at them, look at them smiling. Look at those hookers. They over there like, yeah, we got Jay Morrison. <laughs> this shit is a joke. <laughs> we, we got Jay Morrison in the building. <laughs> they know, right? He letting them know that everybody know what Jay do. They know. They know too. They know about King Jay. <laughs> Shit is a joke, man. It's a joke. You got you got niggas over here psycho babbling, talking about unlocking the minds. I don't got shit to do with the fun, right? You got the EYL guys. They just smiling like yeah, yeah. You got the investors. They sitting in there. Yeah, yeah, Kang. Yeah, Kang. You got boys over here talking about Popeye's chicken, right? But somehow, somehow, this this type of content is not respected. This is the problem. See, actually. Educating people, teaching people, warning people, that's clout chasing. Right? <laughs> Talking about the sun, the moon, the stars, and 5G radiation, and Popeye's chicken, that's real black excellence. I want you to understand that by default, when Boyce compares Jay Morrison's fund to Popeye's chicken, he's effectively demeaning Jay Morrison and putting them down. Because, see, you got to be smart enough to read through the clown shit, right? What he's saying is, Popeye's chicken is bad for you. And we waste our money on Popeye's chicken and Jordan's. So rather than waste our money there, we might as well waste our money with Jay Morrison. Which basically he's telling you <laughs> that investing with Jay is a waste of time. Because he didn't compare it to like a successful white business or company. He's comparing Jay's fund to Popeye's chicken, which tells you all you need to know in regards to what does he truly think about Jay Morrison's ability to perform. He thinks it's no better than Popeye's chicken. But see, these are the people that are supposed to be thought leaders and leaders in the black community, right? <laughs> These are supposed to be your leaders, your educators. It is an absolute joke. Now, on a serious note, if you go to TulsaRealEstateFraud.com, Julian Gordon lays out beautifully, I mean, in detail, why he believes that Jay Morrison committed fraud. If you actually come down here to this part right here, the three potential fraud claims, Let's get there. Boom. He talks about the fiduciary duties of a manager. He then goes into detail about a video. In this video, Jay Morrison calls it 
uh, assemblage of 32 acres when in fact the fund only owns about five acres next door to Jay Morrison's 25 acre estate. <laughs> and then this is the actual property here. Julian, I mean, beautiful work just laying out the potential fraud uh, right here. This is Jay's 25 acres are at 3,900 Demoni. Um, he also talks right here. This is Jay putting it up on follow the paperwork. This is Jay put this up on Instagram. When your baby's backyard is 27 acres of farmland. Right? <laughs> so one needs to ask the question, right? Where did he get all of this money from the bodice, right? If he's deferring his management fees, he's not taking fees. Well, how did he get to 27 acres of land? See, it's group economics to get the money. <laughs> But when it comes to risk, it's all on you. It's not group risk. It's just your risk, right? He ain't part of, he, listen, the, he a part of the benefit of the group economics, but he ain't part of the loss. So no, no, I, I, listen, people, I got to feed my family, right? Like, I need my, bro, I need my dashikis, right? Uh, I need my kufis. Come on, man, right? It's, it's just an absolute joke. And uh, he, he breaks this down. I would, I don't want to, you know, he also talks about JM Rep, about himself giving himself, you know, really, really good financing um, and avoiding a lot of the fees with the funds money. Um, he also breaks down about the fact that the wife has a podcast and she's using the studio there and whether or not if she's actually paying for her being there. Because remember, she like the fund should not be subsidizing her business ventures. See, and that's part of the problem. Because when you look at the black house for what it is, it's just a fucking community center, right? <laughs> the, the whole co-working space makes no sense, right? I'm going to have a co-working space in a movie studio together. <laughs> like, oh, wow. You know, because I'm a serial entrepreneur. So we can do some podcasting over here. You know, we can create some courses over here, you know, and then we can run the play in here. And then over there we can uh, have Tyler Perry Studios. Like, you know, just, just throwing a whole bunch of shit at the wall that don't make any sense. Because, see, you were supposed to be using the money to do real estate. And a co-working space is not going to be profitable. Because even before the pandemic happened, and I said pandemic, not pandemic, purposely. The world was already moving away from office spaces anyway. Because of things like Zoom, because of the power of iPads and MacBooks and tablets, right? We are becoming more and more remote as we go forward. Because right here, I have the computing power of a small you know, um, studio, right? Or a newscast, a, a, new, a broadcasting studio. I don't need to go all the way to a, a office building to create content or do my work. That was already happening before the pandemic. Tech companies are already paying people to work remotely already. So getting that type of co-working space didn't make any sense. But see, again, this is how you know that he was not actually educated in what he was doing. And Tone Talks spoke about this so eloquently. You have a man who's a three-time felon, high school dropout, Failed realtor, failed real estate mogul, right? like has no education. What do you think's going to happen? Do you think he's really looking at forecasts and looking at trends and doing proper assessments of how to properly invest capital? No. As I said earlier, interest rates, if you go here and you look at the Fed funds rate, it was at 0%. Why would you want to go buy, even if you wanted to buy the black house, why would not, why would you use debt? Why not use debt? Interest rates are 2%. You, you could have literally went out here and purchased anything in 2020. Look at the chart. We went on a hockey stick. The market boomed. And he continuously lost money in the greatest bull market of all time. It's a joke. But I'm going to go back to Spencer's video. This is it's something else important that Spencer covers here. Jay was mismanaging the expenses. He used a bunch of money on his pet project, the Legacy Center, which looks cool and actually functions as an event. He ultimately failed to raise more money because of dollars per year for the fund. But we all have a loan officer and work my way up to a brand development national. Jay will speak for hours about why the fund has folks. X commented a video alleging that why he's the next is now up for sale.
through Sheena Pesach about qualifying. He ultimately failed to raise more money because he... I want to find this part because I, I really think that this is telling when he says this. If I can find it. People with an average investment of a $750. Imagine what we can do with 111,000 people or 1.1 million. 15 years for drug trafficking in Maryland. My, my, my. How I know when the cops pulled my transporter over with 700 grand. With any asset class. So what they say that on the scam is, um, is, is bait, man, clickbait talk. It was never clickbait because all of us YouTubers only focused on facts with to show our community what transparent second week I've been called scam since. Jay was too ignorant to understand why real estate investors were making critical and that they looked for the pro cause financial damage to Technology, a million dollars, bro, and transparency to show you where the money's at. Thankfully, ankle bracelet. I got the, the, the cliche black. All of the comments Jay made towards his haters, and then we'll determine if those haters were correct in calling people. I feed him all this financial information for over a decade. Yeah, I can't find it. I wish I could find it where he was talking about he sold his dad crack. I just, I can't find that part. But, you know, I think that is very telling. Uh, Spencer has this somewhere in a video. I don't want to keep just scrolling through it, but he actually talks about how he sold his father crack. And why would you be surprised that a man who is willing to sell his own father crack would actually steal money from you? See, at a certain point, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. And one of the beautiful things about time is it reveals all. See, I can keep repeating the same things because truth is consistent. I don't need to come here and every week give you something different. I told you it was going to fail. I told you why it would fail. I told you how it would most likely end. And I said to you, because nothing he's doing, in my opinion, from how I see it, I don't see it as being illegal. I see it as he's going to be able to run around and say that he was incompetent, that he didn't really have any experience, which, you know, he said he didn't have. And he's going to basically be able to get away with this at the end of the day. Because, <clears throat> you know, the way that it was packaged and worded and put together, it was just, it's put together for him to benefit from it. And I said to you from day one that this is how it was going to happen, that he was going to milk the fund for fees until we got to the point where there was no more capital left. And that's where we are now. And he's going to be able to say, you know, hey, listen, I was subcontracting, doing work, trying to save the fund money. Um, so, and one thing with these type of cases, the reason why I don't believe that um, he's going to uh, really get in trouble is because no one, most of his victims are poor black people. They don't really have a lot of capital or connections to really put that pressure on him properly. Um, when you look at the DA down there and what's going on with the high profile cases with young thug and all of that, um, as well as the, you know, the sec, I just don't see them really pursuing him aggressively. Honestly, um, the dollar amounts too small. Um, it's really, really kind of gray in regards to, um, whether or not it was illegal. Cause yes, he has a fiduciary responsibility. I know that, but you know, again, he could just simply say that he thought that it was a good investment. He thought that the fund would be able to raise more capital and be able to develop on it. So it, it, it kind of becomes a, a give and take. So for the people who aren't idiots who really wanted to support him, my heart goes out to, you No jokes aside, I want to come on here and talk a little shit, but on a serious note, um, this is definitely a blow for black businesses, uh, black black entrepreneurs, black business, people who want to support. A lot of people now are going to see this and just be like, I don't care what it is. I'm not going to support it. And I think that that's part of the problem, right? Because these failures, they are broadcasted wide. And the people who are successful at investing other people's money and managing capital, they don't get the marketing or the push. So what tends to happen is people just cast a blanket viewpoint on all black entrepreneurs or fund managers that you're all scammers, right? You're all schemers. And that's the sad thing about this, right? Is that the, the fallout does more damage, right? Because the marketing, the hype behind it, and then to fail in such a spectacular fashion is laughable. You know, to have $11.7 million and in a matter of five years be shutting down, and the greatest bull market of all time is definitely a blow, you know, and that's why I make this type of content. See, I know people don't like it. I know people think of this as snitching uh, because, see, what I've learned over the time of doing all of this is that the average black person is wicked. They are sick in their mind. 
they are sick in their spirit, uh, and they have succumbed to the social engineering as to what being a real nigga and a real one is. And even in the face of, you know, ab just absolute mismanagement, misappropriation of funds, absolute fraud, you will still have people try to defend this. And he's going to be able to go reinvent himself and he'll go to the church and in a couple of years, people will forget about it. And this is why people like myself, we don't like to make this type of content or we fall back because the uphill fight is so much. You take on so much. I have people doxing my address, uh, you know, spamming my business emails, spamming my business phone lines, ordering a bunch of food, sending it to my house because people want to believe the lie. And if the lie is more believable than the truth, then people will go with the lie. And, you know, it just it goes to show you. And it's the same thing with Umar in the school. It's the same thing with Polite. It's the same thing with the envy situation is that people don't want to believe the truth, even when it's right in their face. Tone Talks gave him every opportunity to come and defend himself and lay out his case. And he couldn't do that. But but to see so many people defending it, it's just it's sick. And there'll be another Jay Morrison because, you know, there are people of the mindset that, well, he ain't take your money. So why do you care? I get that type of comment all the time. It ain't your money. Why are you worried about it for? Because a, a lot of this stuff is a kind of a crossover with the rap community and the urban community. So people are of the mindset, well, listen, man, get that bag. Because, see, if they was in Jay's position, they would do the same thing. And this has been going on in politics. You see the Democrats do it every four years, right? When an election comes up, make a whole bunch of promises and deliver you crumbs. You see your pastor do it all the time. Long. You see the community activists, Black Lives Matter, the organization did it. So th what Jay Morrison, the... This is the consistent play that's always ran. This is not new, right? But people, it amazes me how these same op, these these same plays, these same schemes, can be conducted over and over again, and people just allow it to happen. And as I said before, you know, my schemes, my scams, they're up two thousand, three thousand percent. When I was talking about Bitcoin on this channel at first, it was at three thousand dollars. Now at 63. Ethereum's 3100. I was talking about it when it was $40. Could have made 20 times on your money. 30 times, 40 times on your money. Chainlink when it was 50 cents. But you see, and people go, yeah, that, that crypto thing's a scam. He's a crypto scammer. Where's the victims at? If I was such a scammer, where's my victims? But see, people won't support things that make sense because most of these niggas are slow. Right. So, you know, they're, they're like people like this lady here. She gets up there and the, the scandal. There's no scandal. These are objective facts, miss. <laughs> this man has lost nine million dollars. There's no scandal. There's no. See, there's no defamation here. The best defense against defamation is the truth. And I've been telling the truth now going all, all the way back right here to 2019. And the other videos I made got deleted because they flagged them was back in 2018. I've been making videos about Jay Morrison. And he's not the only one. He's just the most recent one. I see a, a, a couple of donations from S. Right. Jay Morrison doesn't care about black people. Absolutely not. He, he likes to use a bunch of emotionally charged marketing. Look at what they named it. Tulsa. Tulsa. Based around Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Did he do anything in Tulsa? Did he go put any money back into the community there? He talked about all these jobs he's created to 200 jobs, just pure foolishness. And thanks for the donation, brother. Because see, it's all about marketing at the end of the day. And they know what demographic of people they're going after. See, they're not going after people like myself or people who follow me because most of my followers are intelligent and bright. I, they, they go after, this is why they go on Vlad TV. This is why they go on The Breakfast Club. They know the audience of people that they're going after. This is why from the corner to the corner to the corner suite, they're going after people who are just not that bright. Slow niggas. And the majority, the sad reality is that there's just a lot of slow niggas out here. You know, people don't like when I say it, but, you know, to, to be in a room with a man, he, no chairs got thrown, nobody tried to punch him. And, you know, see, that's another funny thing. Because you'll always be in my inbox threatening me, telling me how you're going to pull up on me and I better not go here and I better not go there because real niggas is going to do it to you. Right? And I'll be everywhere. 
But but it's amazing how y'all got all that energy for me when I'm just making a video, right? <laughs> but all of these people in here claim to be real ones from the streets. You know, my old me, I would have did it to them, right? And nobody did nothing. <laughs> they all sitting here just to calm. He telling them, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I took your money and I bought the property. Yeah, right? <laughs> he, he said it right here. Where's the video at? We took him on the video. He go, yeah, yeah, I took your money and I brought the property. Damn, I can't find a video. Damn, where's the video? I thought I had it. Damn, 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 damn. I can't find it. Shit. He's like, yeah, I, I took your money. Oh, uh, yeah, I took your money. I brought 3,900 Demoni Drive a row. Hey, yeah, I brought it. What you gonna do about it? Nothing. Uh, right is right. Uh, right is wrong and wrong is right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's take a couple of questions in here. Mm hmm. Third question, how can you guarantee a 20% rate of return in that time period when the market only gives you 12% and real estate funds average 4 to 8%? And that's a great question, West Legal Group. Uh, oh, great comment, excuse me. Because most REITs, from my research, they charge 1% to 2% as a management fee. Yet he was charging 5.5%. What, what experience does he have where he could be charging 5.5%? Right. What, what was so unique about the fund for such a high management fee, right? For such an inexperienced fund manager, you know? And then, like I said earlier, and I, I covered this about real estate's an efficient market. You're not going to get no, you know, 40X or 50X like you can get in the stock market or in the crypto market because paper assets always overshoot because you're trying to find a marketplace. You're trying to find a valuation. You're seeking value, right? So therefore... You, you've seen the same thing with the marijuana stocks. You've seen the same thing with the rare earth metal stocks. You know, the chip makers, they boom and then they crash. And then they kind of find their footing as you go forward. It always is like that. It's been like that because, again, you're trying to find a new marketplace. Same thing with crypto. You don't know what this stuff is worth. Is it worth a trillion? Is it worth 20 trillion? Is it worth a billion? You don't know. This is why you get outsized gains. You're not getting those gains in the real estate market now. Obviously, because real estate's efficient, you don't carry the same amount of risk either. You don't got to kind of really, like property doesn't go to zero, right? Like if you if you buy decent property, it doesn't go to zero, unless it's like in Flint, Michigan somewhere or something like that, but I digress. But my point is that paper assets can go to zero. So yes, you get big reward in paper assets, but you also get big risk in paper assets. When when I when I look at the fund, like the type of gains was like 50-50 split. Like people really thought they were going to get richer for a $500 investment. But that just goes to show you who he was targeting and why he targeted them. Um, um, let's see something else. <laughs> it says, Eli, you made the seams of my wallet bust from your scams over the years. Please proceed to scam or you like, absolutely. I will keep dropping game on you guys. Uh, right now, we're going to be focusing on um, looking at a lot of these mining stocks, especially the junior miners right now with what, how gold's performing uh, right now. So, you know, I, I, like I said before, man, I just I laugh when people come on here <laughs> like you go to my community tab, document and verified um, almost every cryptocurrency project I've been talking about is at all time highs right now. Outside of like um, ApeCoin, ApeCoin didn't do well. Um, Bondly failed poker markets, but about 85 to 80 percent of my picks are all doing well, you know, and uh, I take pride in what I do. I take pride. When my investors, because see, that's the beautiful thing about taking this type of stance. Yes, the majority of the people will hate you, but you will find people that love you and you will find people that actually you can build with. And that's what I was able to do with putting this all together. Because, you know, people say like, oh, you know, you 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 coming at him because you're trying to build up my tech academy. My tech academy didn't even exist when I was making videos in 2019. It didn't even exist in 2018. Right. So, you know, I, I laugh at these things, but, you know, it, it feels good because when you do what's right, you don't got to be popular. You'll find the people who you can build with. And I, that's one of the things that I take pride in and I enjoy so much, like the community that I've been able to build of serious individuals. And, you know, we we're doing well for ourselves really, really well. Um, um, 
Much respect. What's your thoughts on D Tensor? Never heard of it. So is it a is it a spinoff of Bit Tensor? I have not I have not heard of D Tensor. Remember, guys, I tell you all the time, there's over what 15, probably 20,000 coins now. I mainly focus on the projects I talk about. So when it's um uh Bit Tensor, you know, I'm in Bit Tensor, Akash, Render, um, OPSEC, a GPU. Let's look at though. We'll look at D Tensor. Let's look and see what it looks like. Uh, D tensor. Um, boom, 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 boom. So, oh well. Right off the back, I like it because it's in the D pin sector, right? If this is it right here. Um, this is it right here. D tensor. A uh, Grove Grove Dwayne. Um. Count me as a subscriber. Peace, peace, West Legal Group. Um, I'm looking for you right now, Grove Dwayne. I'll, this is Detensor right here. Um, so I already like it if it's in the GPU space. Because you know that there's a shortage on GPU. So that's what... Remember, we was talking about Bruce, my, my partner in uh, My Tech Academy. He released um, a Render when it was 30 cents. I wish I would have bought more back then. I didn't buy enough of it. Uh, I'm looking for you right now. Yes, that's it right here. So um, let's look at it right now. Boom. So I already like it because it's in the GPU space, right? Cloud node and GPU marketplace. Uh, that's, this is effectively what Akash is, right? So what Akash does is basically uh, just like you have Amazon Web Services where you it's very expensive for you to build out your own data center, right? So you don't have $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 to really build it out and have the hardware uh, to really do that. So... People use Amazon Web Services, which is centralized. The whole purpose of crypto being decentralized is to remove middlemen from out of the equation. So now what Akash is doing and similar to what Render does is basically allow you to lend out your computer hardware and let people remotely use that excess computer hardware that you have. And we know how expensive these GPUs are because remember, in order for you to train AI and large language models, you need really, really powerful GPUs, right? And most people just don't have that. So I already like it that it's in that space. Let's look at the price and kind of see what the price is right now. And then we can kind of look at like whether or not it's a scam. Because you still got to look at the, token, the tokenomics at the end of the day to see how many coins are in circulation and then how basically the inflation rewards and the block rewards go. So um, let's kind of look at that right now. The tensor. Uh, we'll get back to the crypto stuff. I just wanted to, you know, wrap, put a bow on... Um, uh, on the Jay Morrison foolishness. So let's look all time. Oh wow, project selling off. I don't. That doesn't look too good. It just launched. For it looks like right. So it looks like it just launched on April six. So now the first thing I would look at the market cap. This is good. So the market cap is low. It's only four million dollars. So even if it's a scam, like this is something that I would probably put some money into with the, like these type of projects because remember I was showing you guys the other day and I pull it up right now again. So and we'll kind of get to reviewing the tokenomics and stuff in a second. If you come over here, all right, boom, 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 right? If you come over here and you go to um bop, 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 exchanges, memes, categories, right here. If you go to the meme coins, let's go a step here. Memes, boom. So the entire market cap of meme coins is $54 billion. These are coins that have no utility. They're, they're based off like cats, dogs, <laughs> dog with a hat has a $3 billion market cap. Shiba Inu has a $15 billion market cap. Pepe has a $2 billion market cap, right? So when you look at the actual category, like this is crazy to have a $54 billion market cap. If you come over here, to the AI market cap. And these are counting like layer ones. I want to find the actual other category for AI, what I like to look at, because I don't like to look at layer one coins because they have really, really large market caps already. Um, what am I looking for? Nomad, Cadena Ecosystem, C5. Let's see if I can find it. NFTs, Block, Binance. It's very easy to find it on your phone. It's not as easy to find here, the AI stuff. This is storage, so this is Augur. Right here, the pen. So the pen is another one I'm looking at, right? 
that the pen market cap is only $36 billion. And most of the AI projects, when we get to the actual AI sector, you're going to see is even lower than that. So meme coins are almost double the valuation of actual projects that have real utility, real use cases. The pen stands for decentralized physical infrastructure networks. So basically using your computer hardware so people can basically train their AI models, render images faster, um, host stuff in the cloud. Where's the, where, the main one that I like to look at? Governance, Barna, VR, AR, Almeida, Restocking, Layer 1, Analytics. Here we go. AI big data. This And this is still up here at $37 billion too. So there's another one that I look at that's about like $20 billion. But my point is the meme coin sector is double the size of actual projects that have real utility. This value, this is insane to even think that they're valued at that type of valuation. So I believe that when it's all said and done, the AI sector alone can get to probably about 300 to if not $500 billion collectively. So when I look at certain projects and we come back here to Detensor, if it's half as good as it wants to be at a $4 million value, a $4 million market cap, you can easily make 10x on your money if it gets to 40. $40 million is nothing in crypto, right? So I like the fact that it's a low cap coin. Now that doesn't, I'll still put some money in it, like $1,000 or something, if it's some like bullshit, because all with crypto, what tends to happen is if one sector does well, people are always looking for the next greatest thing. So uh, let's go here to the website. All right, boom, 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 boom. Web developers, salespeople for AI, rent GPUs, lend GPUs, similar to, so there's already a project I'm in, GPU, Node AI, um, that I'm in, uh, I'm in Render. So tokenomics, right? They're, they're paying out 5% sales tax, five years. All right, alpha phase roadmap. So right off, right off the back, this is a scam, all right? This is a scam. <laughs> Who's the team? Right? Nothing about the team. Right? So, like, as soon as I see something like this, I already know that this is bullshit. Right? That this is... Now we got to find out what blockchain is on. Right? Is this an ERC-20 token? Because if it's built on top of Ethereum, right? If it's an ERC-20 token, that simply means, like, people don't know this about crypto. But, like, most... Crypto is decentralized. Right? And their GitHubs are... The GitHub repositories are open. They're public. Right? So... Because it's open source. I can just simply come and copy your whole GitHub repository and make my own coin. So like, this is why you have like Uniswap, SushiSwap, QuickSwap, BooSwap, like all of these different DEXs, they're really just clones of each other. Like I just clone your GitHub repository. So when I look at stuff like this, I already know like, okay, this is, this, this shit look kind of shaky. I ain't gonna lie to you, right? Hey, so <laughs> this look real shaky. Features. So, you know, it is not really a lot on the website going on alpha phase gamma phase delta phase yeah <laughs> so you can make some money with it this is like one of those projects like i would put like like one percent of my capital two percent of my capital into this this is not something that i would take serious it's not something that uh, i believe that you're going to really be able to do something major with honestly um now i've been wrong before but i i like i'd rather like when I see this, I'm just like, I'm like, no, no, <laughs> no, like I'll, I'll, I'll basically like this would be something I'll look to do a quick flip. Um, right. Like, I don't even know what blockchain this is built on. I'm trying to find out right now with the range web developers, DAP, home tokenomics with the range of products. Cause if this is built on Ethereum, then I definitely know that it's just like a clone. Uh, we are the next decentralized services expertise rent. It doesn't say anything. Deflationary transparency. Do, 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 All right. Um, we have created a deflationary security for holdings. So rent GPUs, docs. Um, boom, boom. Let's go to the docs and see what they got here. Introductions. Detensors and innovative. Uh, streamlining AI services. Let's see if we can find Ethereum in here. Let's go. Ethereum. I uh, know. So, right. It doesn't say what blockchain it's on. Um, website, marketplace, affiliate program, nodes, roadmap, introduction, use cases. Um, 
hosting cloud storage AI. So, peace, Big Elvis. Peace, bro. Um, right. So I want to. I want to know. Um, I would want to know what blockchain is built on. So, economics right here. Look, look, blockchain Ethereum. <laughs> you see how good I am? <laughs> when I see this, I uh, listen. This is so. What they're trying to do is piggyback off of BitTensor's success. So I'm in a couple of scam projects like this, like um, RBS. I told you guys about it. I'm up like 3x on it now. And RBS, it's a scam though, but I'm in that project. Um, so Ethereum is easy to deploy an ERC20 token. Like I can make my own coin right now in Ethereum in like 10 minutes. So when I see this right here, again, can you make money with it? Absolutely, you can. But to me, this is just a this is just a play off of BitTensor. So, not something that I would take serious at all. So I want to show you something. Boom, 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 boom. So look at Render. This is what I like to see, right? So this is, Render is a project that we've been in for a while, right? The Render network here, right? So you come here, you see team and advisors. This is what I want to see. I'm not putting money in... I'm not putting my investors' money or no big money into something where I need to know who the founders are, right? So I want I want to know who are the founders, what do they do, what are they involved in, right? Right, distributed GPU rendering on the blockchain. So look, just look at this website. This is the best thing that you could ever do whenever you're looking to put some serious money into a project. Look at this website. Ooh. I can create this website in like 10 minutes. <laughs> like seriously, right? <laughs> like this is not hard to do. Look at this webpage and look at this website for render, right? Look, look, clearly they tell you what the project does. They have videos on their page talking about like render. I think renders for like $3 billion right now. Uh, efficient infrastructure. Again, you can find out who the team is. Just click, click here. Boom. You could go look these people up, go see what their backgrounds are. How long have they been in technology? Are they serial project jumpers? Do they always jump from project to project to project? You know, core team, advisors. They even have the guy from um, Singularity AI. He recently just partnered up with them as an advisor. If I can find him. Um, so this is what I like to see with the project. 100%. Big difference. Greg P, that's one of my students too. Peace. He's one of, also, he trades in the live room with us every day. That's the difference between me and many other people. I don't tell you what I can do. I show you what I can do each and every day I get up and I trade live in front of my students. Um, we trade live in real time, right? I don't come on Monday and tell you what happened last Monday, right? And then say, you know, I'm going to go financial literacy. <laughs> Um, let's see. Guy says, uh, peak of moon. Let's see. What's peak of moon? Uh, moon tropics is a project. I mean, let's check on moon tropics and see how moon tropics is doing. That's a project I told my students about too. I want to see how moon tropics is doing. Um, so cause the market's down a lot now. So let's see over seven days. What are we down? One month down about 23%. For the year we up 5,000%. Oh, you said Pika Moon. Let's go. P I K A. Proppy's another project I told you guys about that's doing really well. Moon. Uh, Pika Moon. Uh, let's see how Pika Moon's doing for the year. Oh, damn. You down. Nah. Um, this came out in March. So this is a new project. This is a new project. Nice low market cap. Anytime I see a low market cap, I like it. Now it's just a matter of, is it halfway decent, right? Is it is it like a halfway decent project? So like 
Rio is another project I've been telling you guys about that I'm in, Realio, that has a low market cap. Um, and they're about to move away from the Ethereum network. They're really built on Cosmos um, website. And let's see. Um, Mexi, this, this is what I use to buy my crypto. But um, so this is like they have a lot of exotic cryptocurrencies that are on this exchange before they get to Coinbase and um, the popular ones that people use like Gemini and Kraken, et cetera. So, but you got to use a VPN because they don't take you as customers. So you can use your VPN and go here and get the coins before they get listed on the centralized exchanges. Um, Pika. NFT, play to earn. You know I like play to earn games. Uh, but give NFTs. Do they have a video of the game? Is this the actual game? Okay. I want to see some gameplay. Do they have gameplay? This is just a trailer trailer. So no 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 actual gameplay footage. Red flag. Right. Fire, water, electric. Um, okay. Nice page though. Decent page. Um, play beta. Let's see. Um assemble a team. Play now. Oh. Okay, so I got to actually download the game. So they have a game. Okay, that's they have a working product. That's really good. So that's that's another step in the right direction. So let's look and see if they had a game. The gameplay actually looks. See, so I like that they have a working product. Even better. Now the coin may be inflationary, but you can still game that. Um. So so here gameplay. Right. Boom. All right. So let's see what they got here. Okay, I like this. Working product. Okay, we good to go. So. Okay. So working product. That's that's better than most most of these coins. Welcome Pika Moon Army. Yes, this is the video you have been waiting for and we First page pops up and you can already see some of the 3D aspects of the Pika Battle Arena. It might access quite soon, but it will be added as and just go and you can see all the Pika Moon and all the attacks, defense, and everything else you need to know before you go and delve and see you've got all of the store items. There will be a lot more coming, and you are going to be able to spend the Pika is just in the top right there. Alright, so again I Obviously, I would spend hours researching it, but just from the eye test, for like a quick five minutes, I like what I see. It reminds me of the um, game that was on uh, Engine. Uh, I forgot what was the name of that game that was on Engine. It was a play to earn. Let me see. Look it up. Play to earn uh, Engine. I forgot what it's called. Um, damn, what was it called? Oh man. Our games. Damn, I forgot what it was called. Oh, Axie Infinity. There we go. Axie Infinity was the game. So I like what I see. Again, obviously, we would still have to see the inflation uh, on the network in regards to the coins. Um, is it highly inflationary? How does the whole play to earn ecosystem work? Are there ways that you can gamify it? Like, basically, does it reward the people at the top at the expense? Because basically, what some of the whales are do they'll engineer the game where the more coins you have, you can kind of game the network and basically get better pieces or better players, like a uh, better characters in the game or better weapons in the game than people who don't um, necessarily have the capital. So, but from the eye test, I like it. Uh, it's way better than Detensor. I would definitely keep it on my radar. Um, look at the market cap is only $17 million. So it's about $700,000 in it for the, um, for the past 24 hours. So I'll def definitely, definitely look into that project from a gaming perspective. Um, 2019 is the year of the key. <laughs> so um, boom, 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 boom. I like that, though. Meets the controversy or miss the controversy. Uh, what else you guys got in here? Uh, thoughts on the Ripple stable coin? It's a joke. 
Um, imagine being imagine being excited uh, three years later that you have a stable coin when they were already on Ethereum already. I remember Cardano. See, I tell you guys all the time, the crypto scammers are not like they're not innovative. They come out with the same stuff, but they just try to repackage it a different way. So they'll they'll come here and say, oh, we got a stable coin. For those of you who do not know, a stable coin is just a digital dollar, right? Basically, for every digital stable coin that's in circulation, there needs to be a dollar equivalent asset in a bank somewhere, right? Or in custody somewhere. So whether it's treasuries, whether it's, you know, U.S. dollars, et cetera, government denominated debt. So um, Cardano ran this same play, right? <laughs> this same game last, a couple, of, it was two years ago with the Jed, right? The Jed was supposed to be the Ethereum killer stable coin. And it was going to bring so much DeFi to their ecosystem because it'll be cheaper. And I showed you guys this last time we come here, look at the market cap. <laughs> Right, the market cap of Dejed, their stable coin for Cardano is three, uh, three million dollars. So, Ripple having its own stable coin. Listen, most people are going to use um, USDC, Tether, or BNB, or the other stable coins. This is the reality. Now, I do think that Tether's a ticking time bomb. I told you guys that. To me, the next dump we had FTX collapse. We had um, Celsius block five, three hours capital. The next red flag for me is going to be Tether, right? Tether Tether's going to be the last one that takes us down because we know for a fact that Tether's not fully backed one to one. We know that because of what happened with the New York Attorney General when they basically went after them with their previous lawsuit. So, uh, but um. Uh, Rip, Ripple is just, you know, gasping, you know, just grasping at the air at this point. It's, it's a joke. You know, um, I, I told you guys from the very, very beginning, look at the on-chain activity. See, a person can tell you whatever they want. This is the beautiful thing about crypto. You don't got to trust nothing I say. Go to the Block Explorer and just look at the on-chain activity. If you think that banks are adopting it, then we should see it in the on-chain activity. If there's a lot of new people using the Ripple Ledger and the products and services that they have, you should see an uptick on on-chain activity. For example, BlackRock just launched the Biddle Fund on Ethereum. You can actually see $200 million came to that address. So you don't have to guess what people are doing. You can track it on the blockchain. That's the whole purpose of a blockchain. It's open. It's transparent. You can see things as they're happening. So, you know, to me, uh, Ripple is stale. It's old. It's, it's just the... Every every week it's a new conspiracy. It's something new. It's a joke, straight up. And there's even if you like Ripple, from an ISO two hundred twenty two standard, right? The the there are other coins that are in that same space that have a lower market cap. So like when you come here and you look at Ripple's market cap, right? Because to me, Rip to me, Ripple is a stable coin because it the shit doesn't move. So you can look at Ripple and just call it a stable coin in itself. But if you come here and like you look at XRP, right? The market cap is what twenty nine billion dollars. So that means that you would roughly need another twenty nine billion dollars, whether it's leverage or whatever the case may be to come into the coin for it to double, right? You have other coins that have lower market caps that are basically trying to compete in the same space. So it's just like, you know, you don't like you don't have to, you know, you you don't have to go with Ripple to make a lot of money. Like people don't understand. Like in order for you to 10x your money in a Ripple, it has to go to 300 million uh, 300 billion dollars. Do you really think that Ripple is going to go to 300 billion dollars? Like I don't. Like I honestly don't. Like there's just there's better projects that you can put your money into. So, right. And if you come over here, show all, you can look at the tags and you can kind of just um, be able to find potential um, competitors. So like, look, you got Stellar XLM. The market cap's only 3 billion. So <laughs> Ripple is, you know what, 10 times larger, right? So you can go to HBAR. You know, I'm big in HBAR. I've been in HBAR for years now. HBAR is another project. That you can go with a quant is another project that I'm big on. Um, that's working with enterprises and um, banks. So there's a, there's a lot of other projects you can go with. So uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Controversy. Thanks, bro. You've confirmed my suspicions. I'm weighted in them. If you get what I'm saying, patiently waiting. Yeah. 
Thoughts on Caspa? I own Caspa. I think that Caspa is going to be a top 10 coin. Um, so when I became a Ripple Tard, I told you guys I was a Ripple Tard for a couple of weeks. I, I can look at the chart and see that it was getting ready to break out. Um, I loaded up on Caspa. I took the profits when I doubled my money there and put it into Caspa. Um, I think that Caspa is easily going to be a, a top 10 coin. I believe Caspa and um, BitTense is going to be a top 10 coin. Look at the market cap right now. Uh, Caspa is only $2 billion, 2.8, just under $3 billion. Um, once they really, once they really perfect smart contracts and, um, see what you got to understand about Caspa is that Caspa is a fair launch coin. So there's not a lot of parasite VCs backing in a project. So for example, when you want to get listed on a lot of centralized exchanges, you have to spend money to get listed. You have to pay for those listings, right? Or give away a certain amount of your tokens, right? So there has to be like a pre-mine that you set aside, meaning you pre-mine the coins before listing them or before launching them. And as the price rises, you kind of give them to exchanges, like as a bribe, to basically get listed on the exchange. Uh, Casper is a fairly launched coin. So basically everyone who has their coins either had to mine them into existence or purchase them. So there was no one allotted or giving coins up front, which makes it really, really powerful like Bitcoin, but you're not going to get a lot of the popularity with the VCs because they weren't giving coins early because the whole game of crypto is that I want to get in before you and dump on you. I don't really care about the utility. I don't care if the coin has real use cases. I want to get in early, dump on you, buy back in at lower prices. Similar to what ICP did, right? ICP came out at this high valuation and then they just smoked the market. But Casper is by far one of my favorite projects. By far. By far. Ultimate. All they have to do is it's because see Ethereum has proven itself to be uh, Ethereum can't scale. It's not ready for prime time. It's just not. It's it cannot scale. They've been talking to all of these different upgrades, merge. Listen, it cannot scale. When I say it can't scale, meaning that people are not paying for me forty dollars for a transaction, fifteen dollars for a transaction is nothing. For other people. That, that's insane to pay that kind of money for a transaction. Like, you know, if I only got a couple thousand dollars to invest and I'm paying $20, $30 in gas fees, sometimes 50, that's just not, that's not feasible. And to say like, oh, well, just, you know, go use a layer two. You're adding more friction. I got, okay, I have to go from my bank to Coinbase. Then I have to go from Coinbase to MetaMask. Then I have to go from MetaMask to bridge up to a layer two. Like, it's just, most, most people, it's too much friction. And even bridging from... Like Coinbase, the Coinbase wallet and all stuff. Again, it's too much friction for the average person uh, who really doesn't know a lot about crypto. So this is why it's Casper's game to lose, right? If the, if the developers can put together working, you know, a working product and not not fuck it up, no bugs, it's Casper's game to win. It's Casper's game. To, that's why Aval Why do you think I'm running my Avalanche nodes? Like when I, my my investors, when we put up. When we put up the um, when I put when I put together the 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 nodes for both Avalanche and Ethereum, I was telling people that I think that Avalanche is going to outperform Ethereum because it's just about the market cap, right? And look, I was right. <laughs> Everything I said about it ended up being right. Um, you can't see Avax, uh, A V A X. Every every look, everything I said ended up playing out just like just like I said it would. I can't see the damn microphone. A V A X at Avex. There we go. Boom. So, you know, look, look at Avalanche's performance over the year. Look at that. Just look at that. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. We made some big money in Avalanche. And I think that Avalanche can hit $400. I think that Avalanche can do a 10x from here. Right? I, I, I truly think that Avalanche, because it can, it can relatively scale. And I've been kind of meeting with some of the developers and stuff and like seeing some of the games that they're working on. Cause I told you this to me, this bull run, the the biggest, the big, the best performing sectors are going to be gaming, real world assets and AI. And a lot of the games that are coming out on Avalanche are going to be like AAA type games, like Call of Duty type games. So, you know, we've been in, we've been in, I think we've been in Avalanche is like, like $9, $6. And it's like, I really think Avalanche is going to have like $400 once it's all said and done. Insane. Um, uh, hi, Eli. What do you think about near? I own near. Um, I own near protocol. Let's kind of see how it's been doing. I've been in it for a while. 
I don't think it's performing as good as the other projects that I've been in. But I like Nier. This is a VC backed project. So you can see it's been performing okay. Right? It's recovered. But it still hasn't recovered as high as back here. I like Nier Protocol. Centralized, very, very centralized in regards to it being a layer one blockchain or they collect the call it layer zero where you can build applications on top of it. So whenever you hear people talking about like building apps, so think of it like your iPhone, right? Your iPhone is a platform. And then on here, on this device, you can build applications that people can use. These are centralized though, right? So Apple says to you what apps you can or cannot put on their operating system. So in the case of like Ethereum with smart contracts or dApps, they call them decentralized applications. You can basically build decentralized applications on top of that platform, right? The blockchain of Ethereum. So they have like this near protocol that basically is the same thing where you could build applications, but uh, it's very, very centralized. But I think it's going to perform really, really well. I own, I own near protocol. Very, very centralized. I think that there are better layer ones to put your money into, but I, I have it as well. I think Avalanche is better. Um, I think Cosmos is better. I think Avalanche, Cosmos is better. Um, DAG. Um, what else? There's some other. Casper, to name a few. But I think it's going to do well. It's not a scam project by any stretch of the imagination. And you have some really, really big players in it. Uh, took a couple more questions, and then we're going to wrap it up. Um... I'm in Morpheus Network. I got a big bag of Morpheus Network. Big, big, huge bag of Morpheus Network. I think Morpheus Network is going to do really, really well. I've been in Morpheus Network now for, what, a couple of years? I mean, Morpheus Network, Centrifuge, um, Rio, Realio. This is another project I'm really, really, really big on. Really big on, Rio. I would tell you guys to definitely go and uh, look at this project um, when you get a chance, Realio. Um, so... This, right here, it says the market cap is 12 million. On the website, it says that it's like oh, no, 200 million. Bottom line is it's still a low cap coin in the real uh, world asset um, space. This is the project I'm really, really big on. So really, really big on. I really would encourage you guys to go do your research on this project. If I could find a website, boom. So this is def definitely one of my favorite projects. And it has a low market cap. So I think it could do really, really well. This project, Centrifuge, Ondo, um, basically bringing real world assets, real estate, stocks, bonds, commodities onto the blockchain. Anything that has a real estate or like something that you could pay online, like or like your stocks you trade online, all of that type of stuff is going to be bought onto the blockchain, right? Because it removes counterparty risk. And therefore now I can be able to see more transparency into markets. So like, so for example, it's like you trading on Robinhood and I may be on Webull. Now you're going to be able to interchangeably just go to whatever exchange and be able to move value across, you know, this broker to that broker, this exchange, to that exchange, and you have real time settlement. So that's one of the problems too. Like I trade futures. So what starts to happen is for me, it takes about 12 hours for everything to settle. So like when I close out of a position, I don't get like my brokerage statements, like the end of the day. Um, and like some bond trades, like for people who take delivery of assets, like it could take a day or two to really settle up and match up all of the orders on a blockchain. Everything will be verified. You can kind of pull it up in real time. So when people talk about like, you can kind of see things in real time with the blockchain. If I go to, um, ether scan for a second, I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right. Boom. If I go here. Like I can see everything that's happening on the chain. Right. So like, I don't have to guess. What's going on? I can look at the latest transactions and I can actually pull it up. Boom. And I can see like what's actually going in here to block confirmation. I can see the transaction hash. I can see uh, from where it went from to who it went to. I can then click on it. Like I can see every single thing that this particular address has been involved with, right? Overview. This is the address. So this is what they mean by transparency. Like I don't like, most most of the exchanges and the brokers and stuff that you use, you don't really know what's going on here. Like you don't know if thinkers, uh, if TD Ameritrade has a million shares of Apple or two million. They just say that they do. You don't know that though, right? And that's gonna that that's what happened with um, uh, GameStop when it was short when it was doing a short squeeze. Like what starts to happen is that it's called rehypothecation. So a lot of these 
brokers and exchanges, they'll they'll sell shares of stock that they don't even have because they know most people don't really take delivery. So they can kind of rehypothecate the same shares over and over and over again. They may only have 2 million shares, but they'll let you trade 20 million shares of it, right? And it's, it's not until things really get out of whack that they have to kind of, you know, either manipulate the price or try to then go somewhere else and locate those shares. But with, the, with a blockchain, you can see every single thing that's happening as long as you got that particular address. So it brings more transparency for people who are doing business. Similar to, to like what happened with... um. Uh, so, for example, with like the supply chain back when the pandemic happened, where like I didn't know which warehouse had the say the, the face masks or the saline bags. Right now, if you have these things on a blockchain, you can actually you don't have to trust your 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 vendor. You don't have to trust your third party. You can verify on the blockchain. So this is why everything will be tokenized and it'll bring more transparency and more liquidity to markets. And this is why BlackRock and all of these other big institutions are getting involved because, again, it brings more transparency to markets. And it's just easier to transfer value that way. Um, uh, oh, Dame Dash is back. What's up, Dame Dummy? Yo, Eli, I'll be in Miami for Drink Champs next week. I'll be sure to pay your jaw a visit. <laughs> All right, brother. Listen, Dame Dummy, I'll see you when I see you, man. Listen, thanks for the donation, but save that money for your child support, man. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, Tether, Dame with all the smoke. <laughs> Don't worry. I got a new video I'm cooking up on YouTube. Uh, KRC is coming uh, 20. I'm, listen, man, I'm, I'm excited too. As I said before, Right now, if I had to say my top 10 projects, I would go, um, I would say like, you know, uh, Akash, Render, uh, Tau, Chainlink, um, what's the top of my, Telcoin, um, Casper, what's some other projects I was talking about? Uh, OPSEC, um, it was another, it was a couple more. You guys can tell me. Rio, I like Rio in my top 10 for a real asset play. It's exciting times because see, so now next week I'm going to get into like what I think the Fed's going to do, right? Because now you have the wars popping out, pop, popping off with Iran right now. So I'm long, I'm currently long oil, but the markets are shorting oil because they believe that demand is going to be destroyed if the Fed keeps interest rates at five and a half percent. I believe that the Fed's going to keep rates higher for longer and they'll probably start easing and cutting towards the end of the year once the war kind of starts to get a little bit worse or worse excuse me uh once the war gets worse and then um as the more they start to escalate it the more rates are higher and it tips us into a recession that's when the fed is going to start to uh, cut interest rates because again they want to get the democrats reelected. Uh, they want to get you know Biden back in office. So going into the fall, that's when they'll start easing, and that's when like inflation, the Fed's going to basically have to realize that they're just not going to be able to stop inflation. That's the reality, right? So um, that's just that's what, that's what I believe. I believe going into Q4, Q1, that's when they'll start the easing process. And once once they start to ease, market takes off. Market absolutely booms. Quant, yeah, I love Quant. I've been in Quant for a while. Quant is trying to be like provide middleware for businesses. So rather than companies, you know, having to build out their own blockchain, they'll be able to plug into a lot of the um, middleware that uh, Quant is making for corporations and businesses and even banks. Yeah, exciting times though, man. We have a lot of opportunity to make a lot of money uh, because remember, there's there's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines that just can't even touch crypto. They just can't because from like a, a from a regulatory standpoint, once we get more regulatory clarity and the SEC stops messing with you know decentralized exchanges and stuff like that, market's going to take off and boom. So BlackRock is a step in the right direction. The Buildable Fund is a step in the right direction. Your job is to see the obvious before it's obvious to everyone else, right? You don't you don't start investing in something once everything's legal and ready, right? You get in early. Because another thing that I believe that's going to happen soon is they're going to make it illegal to take your coins off of centralized exchanges. Like you can buy the coins, but they're not going to allow you to be able to send it from the coin from Coinbase to a custodial wallet. Like my ledger, this device here where I control my private keys. 
they're going to make it where you can't like the only way you can remove it off of the exchange is if you identify who you're sending the coins to. Like that was a part of the stablecoin bill. I started reading the recent stablecoin bill that they came out with. So I would tell you that now is the time for you to get your coins off of these exchanges. Uh, now is the time to get in, right? So therefore you can have some control because as we go deeper, we're, we're reaching the end of the fiat empire, right? The fiat, fiat currencies across the world are failing. Everyone has a tremendous amount of debt. And you already, you've seen what Canada is starting to do where they're raising taxes on the rich. They're going to make it very hard for you to move money around. Um, and they're going to make it very hard for you to leave a lot of these countries, 11, 11, make a wish. But they're going to make it very, very hard, right? So this is why crypto is important because it's outside of the system. And you can now take your money with you anywhere you need to go in the world, right? Because trust me when I tell you, um, if you read The Creature from Jekyll Island, I've been talking to you about this for years, as you go deeper into debt, the only next thing to do is go to war. Because listen, you, you don't have to worry about feeding people and paying them pensions if you blow them up, right? <laughs> You know, I don't have to worry about reducing a standard of living if I can just reduce you. So that's what governments do as we go further and further uh, into debt. I mean, we're adding a trillion dollars every hundred days, right? And this is another reason why they're going to have to cut rates soon. I spoke about this on the last video is because, remember, the, the more debt that we take on at higher rates, it's more expensive for the government to borrow, right? So therefore, that means that it's going to be more expensive for us to pay it back. We're getting to the point where... We're spending about 700 to 800 billion dollars per year on the interest alone on the debt. So we're going to have to cut rates anyway because it's just going to bankrupt the government. Um, but um, so I believe that this is why it's important to, you know, make sure that you have your gold. If you already have money, if you're trying to build wealth, you don't touch gold, you touch crypto or stocks. But the problem with stocks is stocks are within the financial system. So therefore, they can clamp down on you. Crypto being outside of the system is that meaning if I got to flee the country, I just go somewhere else and I just plug my, you know, plug my ledger into or, you know, um, put my seed phrase into an application and I get my crypto and just move it to a centralized exchange and be able to convert or be able to just buy things with my crypto as well in other countries. You can do that, too. Um, do you still see upside in Solana or is it too late? I, I think that Solana is going to do well because it has a lot of VCs behind it, but the technology is shit. Like I like like it te like the whole concept of I uh, look look at the market cap. It's sixty it's sixty eight a billion dollars. You probably can get it. It probably can get to like two hundred when it's all said and done. So you may you know three extra money maybe. Yeah, you know, possibly. I can see you three x and maybe four x in your money. You missed most of the gains. You had to be in Solana last year. I think that Avalanche is going to be able to give you better gains. Uh, Cause it has a lower market cap. So again, look at them. So this market cap here is 68 billion. Again, it could still make you good money, but I think that, you know, you're better off here. It's only 14 billion. So you probably, you, you I can see uh, Avex 10 xing and it's the same thing with Ethereum. Like I own a tremendous amount of Ethereum, but I sold a lot of, I sold like 75% of my ETH for AI coins. Cause it's just, it makes more sense. Uh, I st Ethereum's not going anywhere. It's going to get an ETF. Um, I don't know why I can't spell today. I can't see the damn keyboard. Um, Ethereum. Um, so I think that ETH's gonna get the uh, the ETF next. Um, so I think that Ethereum's gonna probably hit like fifteen k, like ten to fifteen thousand dollars, just because. People, like a lot of people don't know about Chainlink. They don't know about Avalanche. They don't know about Cast, but that's just people, right? They're going to go with the next best thing, like, oh, ETH, right? So that's just how like a lot of older people are, especially who are not like knee deep in the technology. They're going to, they're going to flock to, to ETH. So, but yeah, Solana definitely has uh, some upside. Do, 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 do. What's going on or Nesta? Um, don't call names on this man's channel. You come here. Uh, who's street knowledge? Let's see. Anybody following this clown's advice needs a mental evaluation. Uh, yeah, street knowledge media. I've been saying the same bullshit. Look at it. Look, look, look at the bullshit. Look at, look at my bullshit. Let's look at the bullshit. Look at how my bullshit's been doing. Look at my bullshit. Look at my bullshit. All time highs. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. 
Look, 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 look at it. From three thousand dollars, seventy thousand dollars. Look at it. Look at it. Look at look at look at look at look at it. 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 Look at look at the bullshit. Look at the bullshit. Look at the bullshit. Right. Let's go here. Let's go. Right. Let's go here. Let's look. Let's look at the bullshit together, guys. Let's look at the bullshit together. Right. Let's look at it. Let's look. Let's look. Let's look. Look at it. Let's look at it. Let's look. 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 Let's
click What's this wrong button here. Niggas? What's wrong with you? Right. It's a lot of stuff that I'm gonna be What's able to incorporate y'all? into you niggas are crazy. Show, right? So I have a lot of stuff. Like I have this too. I have a stream deck now. It's gonna let me bring different scenes up. You know, I got a lot of stuff that I've been working on. A lot of stuff that I've been working on. So you know. Mm-hmm. He just wanted a shout out. Well, he got a shout out. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of um, a lot of stuff that I've been working on. So I'm in the process of trying to get it together. You know, to increase the the, the show quality. I'm gonna have like overlays branded and stuff like that. You know, it just it takes. It takes time to really put things together. And one thing I would say to anyone that's like an entrepreneur or like a business, uh, you know, trying to be a business personality, influencer, or just a businessman, or woman in general, you know, don't don't rush things. Take your time, because like if you watch when I first got started to where I am now, it's been a steady progress. Right. But, you know, you got to keep on a process as well as a progress. Right. So you get progress by having a good process. Just focus on the process and you'll get to where you need to go eventually, um, you know? Yeah. So. But <laughs> we must stay focused, yeah. But I'm going to wrap it up now, guys. I just want to close like this. Um, I warned you guys about Jay Morrison years ago. Myself, plenty of others, Yvette, Tone, they were the first ones talking about the problem with the fund, the fact that he was grifting, um, that's why I really started even covering him as aggressively as I was. And I was doing this, no knock to anyone, but I was doing this before Tony and before JT. Um, and uh, we just happened to align on these things, which is why we kind of collab together and, you know, talk about, spoke about those and speak about these things. Uh, but no one paid me to go after Jay Morrison. Um, I wasn't doing this because of some financial literacy beef or whatever, because when I first started making videos, my tech academy didn't even exist. I wasn't taking investors' money publicly. I wasn't creating courses. So you can't say, like, oh, I was doing this to somehow gain clout. Like, no. Um, I was doing this because I could just see that it was a grift. And then now that we know what we know, it was a reason why he was, you know, talking and posturing the way that he was because he was trying to uh, basically build his celebrity to market the fund. And if Tone didn't make those videos, he would have gotten that $50 million. The only reason why he didn't get it is because Tone really rang the bell and rang the alarm and people kind of woke up, you know, but sadly, there are still some Jay Morrison fans out here because, you know, when you're dealing with the Hope Tech Back to Africa, Red, Black and Green B1s, they're, they're just not people that are rooted in reality. Um, so it's very, very hard to have rational conversations with them. Uh, now, again, I said this before and I kind of still stand on this. I don't believe that he did anything illegal. Uh, is it, it's in the gray area, right? And the way that the fund was put together, it basically gave him, you know, the ability to kind of reign over the funds and do what he wants. And that's what he wanted. And I told you from the beginning, he was going to bleed the fund dry with management fees, and then he was going to milk it with his sister companies. And that's what he did. Um, now we know, allegedly, based upon Julian's um, research, who is a top, in, his lead investor, he stated that, uh, Jay Morrison uh, used the fund's capital to purchase his new residence as well as the 25 acres or 27 acres it sits on. Um, listen, that that's that's some great research. I have to let it play out. Yes, he has a fiduciary responsibility, but again, I, I just don't see the, the feds getting involved or the SEC getting involved because it's black people. And most most importantly, we don't really believe in snitching, <laughs> right? We think... It's amazing to me how we try to conflate street shit to business or politics, right? Like, you know, I didn't get into business to be involved in street politics, right? Like, to me, I thought snitching is that when you and I are committing crimes together and I decide to tell on you to get a lesser sentence, meaning that we both signed up for the streets, but then I went against the code. I didn't know that you as an everyday citizen who's working would view yourself as snitching because you are basically telling the truth how you were wronged. Right. So, you know, I, I it just never made sense to me that people think that way. Um, but again, you know, people want to stick to this, you know, so-called street code and 
That's fine if you want to. I'm a proud sidewalk guy. Like I said, I enjoy it. I ain't knocking nobody who went through some things in life. I get it. Most of my family's been incarcerated. So trust me, I know. Uh, but again, I'm I'm proud to be just a regular sidewalk lame cornball, right? Life is much more simple and easy that way. Um, so, but, uh, you know, I just hope that we can learn from this. I hope that people can grow from this and understand that business is business. Uh, no matter how revolutionary you may sound, no matter how positive this person may be, at the end of the day, we're conducting business. And when I'm doing business, I don't want to know about your, you know, what you did with Freddie Gray and what protests you led. I could care less about that. When we talk about economics, let's talk about economics. Your spirituality and all that stuff can be at the door. Because whenever a person is leading with that, they're trying to deceive you. And that's just the reality. So, you know, um, I told you guys I fell back from this type of content and I did. I really just covered this because, you know, I started covering it. So it's a beautiful way to put an ending to it by saying, I told you so. And again, I hope the people who were impacted from this. And again, a lot of you weren't impacted a lot because we're talking about, you know, $500. Uh, it was not a lot of money. Most of you are bounced back. This is not like a, you know, Caesar situation or Greg where people lost millions or hundreds of thousands. You know, we're talking about a couple of hundred dollars here. So I think that most of you guys will be able to bounce back. And um, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, you know, hopefully this is a lesson, you know, not a loss, but a lesson. And that you kind of just listen to people when they share information. And one thing about uh, a person, you know, if someone challenges them openly and publicly, um, that has an equal platform, if not bigger, and that person doesn't want to step up or doesn't even want to provide, even if they don't want to go on that person's platform, if they won't equally match them with the same receipts, debunking what they're saying, then that tells you all you need to know about that person, that they're hiding something. Where there is smoke, there's always fire. Uh, when Tone called him out, Tone gave him every opportunity to come on the show and you know, basically debunk the things that he was saying. He wouldn't do it. He didn't even have to go on the show. He could just went on this platform and debunked it. But he chose not to. So that right there shows me that you have something to hide. Um, and then even if you didn't want to debunk it or you felt you was bigger than it, your performance proved everything to be right. So that's all I have to say. Now we can put Jay Morrison behind us. And we can move forward to other things. Guys, please like and share the video. Subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you want to follow me on Instagram, a link to my Instagram page is on is in the description below because I create more content over there than I do here. Also, please be advised that when you follow me, my page is verified. I have a blue check mark. I would never DM you first asking you for money or for an investment. If you want to do business with me and you want to invest with me, there is a number in the description below. You will text the word invest to that number. I will then send you a video. After watching that video, if you are interested, you will then respond with the word yes with both your name and email address, and then you and I will get on a Zoom. I would never ask you for money without getting on a Zoom call with you, without sending you a contract. I do legal, legitimate, ethical business. You should never be cash apping people blindly or zelling people, right, without speaking to the person and seeing the person. I understand with AI, <laughs> it may sound like me on the phone or something like that. People, see me face to face. Get on Zoom with me. My page is verified. Come DM me. Come talk to me. But please, use some discernment on the internet. Uh, you know, a lot of you come to me, oh, man, you know, fake page scanned me. Listen, I have nothing to do with that, right? If you want to do business with me, you guys got my number, right? You got my Instagram. There we go. That being said, guys, have a blessed and beautiful evening.